morning again, sisters, uh, and the few brothers that might be here with us. Um, I'll just say I got my hair in a braid because I showered it not long ago, so I didn't really feel like undoing it, and I know it makes me look really old. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I won't do that. Uh, one of my commenters said, don't do that, so I'm not going to. I'm going to try not to do that. Um, thank you. They were very kind comments, too. Um, so... Um, I'm going to do something that's probably going to aggravate some of you. I'm going to reread. I'm going to read what I actually posted under the last video again. And I'm going to explore it a little bit more for those who maybe don't understand why it is so important. Okay. Um, because one woman said, asked, uh, and it was a legitimate question. I really don't have an answer for you. I really can't um, validate time frames too much. What I'm trying to validate is a little book that is sealed up with truth. And um, I know I don't have to explain every uh, scripture that's in the Old Testament because it's they're simply not part of the little book. What I can establish is that the beginning is a lie um, or that it's very highly allegorized in such a way to deceive you. And, and so um, what I mean by that is when did, um, you know, this concept of Adam and Eve... Uh, you know, begin. I can't really, uh, you know, pinpoint that exact time frame. I can tell you that there's a great deal of deception around that story that is told. And so I'm going to go in <clears throat> again under my last video, and I know this may aggravate you, though those out there who may understand what I'm trying to drive at. But for those who don't, who may be new, who may pop in and, and watch two minutes here and there, because like the bulk of my videos get a 10 minute watch. That's the bulk of them. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I've pinned two hour long videos, hour and a half. I suspect the average duration of any, most of my videos, if you go average, is probably about an hour. Um, and the highest I've ever gotten is like 18 minutes. So it's telling me that most that hits on my videos are not watching them. Um, this core group, I think, cause, um, the front line, she's Shamer, uh, Shamar, I don't know if I'm saying that right. She said, um, I see, I watched it from beginning to end. And I'm like, yeah, that's nice to know. You know, it really is because I know that there are those who do that, but a lot of them are not doing it. They are just hitting on it. Blip, blip, blip. And I understand that I will do that myself. I'll blip, 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 because it can drag in places. It can get pretty boring and you're trying to hit at the key points of information that are certainly important to you. Um, so anyway, I don't know why I said that. I apologize. Um, but this information is very important. And so I guess that's why I was saying it. Um, you know, it's important not to blip through the information because I know I used to do it and you will miss important detail and I still do it, you know, um, to some videos that I have no intentions on watching. Um, I have, I will do that too. So sorry for the that anyway so here's my comment under the very last video that was just posted it says by b-u-y means believe and that is another definition of the word by now we always have the idea that means to lay the cash down doesn't it you know um or the blood is what purchases us no it's the truth that purchases us and will set us free uh, from being the captives under man's religious lie so by means believe the truth and sell it not. Um, they, these mighty kings, they are sellouts and they are. The Old Testament testifies that they did so take bribes. That's right. Um, I actually looked at that quite a few years ago. Um, I haven't really gone into a whole lot of detail in uh, recent studies. Maybe that's something I could look at. Um, so how could Adam, Satan, know enough to accuse a woman? So again, we got to drive at you know, what does it mean to be innocent? Well, to be innocent means not to be accusing. You don't accuse. And the only reason why I'm allowed to come up with um, this case is because it is a case. It's called the controversy of Zion in the Old Testament. And the woman did so go silent. She says, the serpent did give to me and I did eat. Well, we're going to look at that serpent. And we're going to look at the allegory around that and see if we can break that lie down. But 
In Isaiah 42, she says, long time have I held my peace. Have I been restrained? She's the restrainer. And she is restrained by the chains or the yoke of the law system of man. That's what's restraining her. She says, long time have I held my peace. Now will I go forth? Right? I will destroy and devour. I will take down your lie. That's what I'm going to do. And I will deliver my children. I will go forth as a travailing woman. But she has remained silent. And so when we go back to Eve in the garden, she says, the serpent did give and I did eat. Well, who's the bloody serpent? You've got to be identifying who that serpent is. We've got to. So, and we're going to do that. So I say here, how could Adam, Satan, know enough to accuse a woman except that he had already taken from the tree of good and evil? The only way the woman becomes wise enough to bring her case forward is through time and the abuse of man's law against the woman. He is the Antichrist. We can prove it against the woman's law. And it's under that abuse of his law system that she grows wise. That's how she grows wise enough to go forth with the truth. Okay, so he has accused for these thousands of years. So how could he have been wise enough to accuse except that he had already taken from the tree of good and evil? He knew enough to accuse and to actually blaspheme her holy name, which is what he actually did. He has accused for these thousands of years. And yet she, the woman who has been accused of every nasty thing, has remained silent until the end. Until she is wise enough herself to go forth and deliver her children in truth. He was a snake, a liar, and a rebel from the beginning. And now he is in the heavens playing an angel of light or Lucifer. And he is. Um, Jesus, the idol, plays, pretends to be so illuminated that he comes in the fullness and he breaks open um, the Old Testament. And he tells you that he's the answer to every question that you could ask in the Old Testament. Well, that's a lie. We'll look at this. He was a snake, a liar, and a rebel from the beginning. And now he is in the heavens playing an angel of light or Lucifer, the one who had the knowledge to accuse from the beginning, because he was actually the one who put his hand to the tree of good and evil. His name was Adam. Yeah, but she got the blame for it all, right? So the way that we prove this is through a series of words. If you go to the word Beelzebub, that's Strong's Greek 954, it will tell you that it is a name for Satan. We want to zero in on that. And it's also a name of uh, the Lord of Flies. Um, it's derived from or transliterated from the Old Testament 11676. We did in one of my videos a long time ago, look at a king whose name was Beelzebub in the Old Testament. Okay, so it does tell you a lot when you actually try the spirits. That's what it really means to be a warrior and to be in battle in this spiritual battle. We are actually battling the lie of the devil. We are battling the lie of fallen Adam. These men who come on this video, these not this video, but on um, various channels and try to claim that they're in a great spiritual battle and they think they're going to be hearkened to because they look a certain way, they behave a certain way, and they have a dick between their legs. That's what it is. I'm sorry, but that's exactly what it is. They think they're going to be listened to simply because they're male. We're in a great spiritual battle. No, you ain't. You ain't in a spiritual battle at all because you refuse to test the spirits. You're as dumb as a bump on a log. You, you're just sitting there. You're not battling. You're not studying the word. You're not breaking it down. You're not asking questions and seeking the answers. That's what it means to be strong. That's what it means to be a warrior in the spirit. Is that not what you women are? Are you not God's great warriors in the spirit? You are Asking these questions, just like I know I was when I was one of these silent and tight-lipped little Christian women sitting in the pews, listening to the men on the pulpit preach, and you'll have this smile on, and they don't care what's going on behind those eyes because they don't care about you. All they care about is that he pronoun, and that they get to pump at you that they are your head, and that's only when they want to speak about headship doctrine, um, they would 
when the women come into the fray of anything they were speaking about on the pulpit, it was about, well, you women, and, and I heard it over the years where I used to go, you really need to heed your husband's words and you need to recognize that he is your head. Why? <laughs> Why? Because they don't want you thinking. They do not want you thinking for yourself. Because in the day that you do that, then you really become a warrior in the spirit. You truly do. These liars who go, oh, we're, we're warring in the spirit. You ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing nothing. You're sitting there and you're letting others lead you astray. That's all you're doing. But being a warrior and asking the deeper questions that's going to actually be answered by the spirit when you actually go in and you test what these spirits are of. Yeah, we know what these spirits are of. They are of the lawyer, the devil, Adam, the father from the beginning, who deceived the woman, right? So I know I didn't say what I wanted to say there, but this is important that we establish who Satan is in the beginning, all right? So Beelzebub, it, we, we recognize it's the name of Satan. Then when we go to this word, uh, four, five, six, seven, Satan, of Chaldea. Now that was of interest to me because the Chaldeans are Babylonians, which the Babylonians originate from the Assyrians, right? So so it takes us back to Sennacherib, who was an Assyrian, who accused and blasphemed her that sat between uh, the cherubims, which actually the cherubims itself seems to have been constructed as uh, an idol itself, these idols itself over time. Um, so, I mean, there's a deep story going on here there is um so we get satan um what see also four five six seven satan of the chaldea origin um satan a name of satan bills above okay so strong's hebrew eleven sixty seven baal and it is from the same as baal big b-a-a-l which is your idol and it'll tell you all the meaning for the Strong's Hebrew. This is not Strong's Greek. So the first one's Strong's Greek. This is 1167, Baal. Remember, we were looking at Beelzebub, another name for the devil, for Satan. So here we go. We get a meaning for Baal in the Old Testament, 1167. And it'll also tell you it means all these words, which is Baal from same as Baal. Allies, archers, bird, bound, bridegroom, captain, case, charmers, citizens, creditor, dominant, dreamer, do, husbands, leaders, lords, man, Mary, masters, owner, possessors, relative by marriage, schemer, um, who practice and who are wrathful. So then it, if we go to Strong's Hebrew, we move ahead one to 1168 in Hebrew, the same as B-A-A-L, a Phoenician deity, Baal, plural, Baalim. So that's why we were able to break down what the plague was that broke in upon Israel, because Balaam's name leads us straight back to really um, him sending in the harlots that were poisoning the men with another doctrine, another a, a lie, so that they would turn against their own right hand. So we know that the plague that broke in upon them due to Balaam's name being a part of this, and that the solar calf deity over hundreds of years became Baal itself standing, is the image of a man, which takes you to Daniel 2, which is why that image becomes so important to understand. So then we go to Satan the accuser. This is Strong's Greek, four, five, six, seven. What did the first man do? Well, he accused. He accused the woman, did he not? Well, in order to know enough to accuse, he had to have taken of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He would not have known to have accused otherwise, except that he had already put his hand to the tree. So the woman says, the serpent did give to me and I did eat. Who was the serpent? So, Satan the accuser, strong Greek four, five, six, seven, Chaldea origin corresponding to my bad. That means works, works of the devil, works of wickedness. It will, I think it might say good as well, but the, you'll see them often say my bad, right? So, Satan the accuser, the accuser, the devil, Satan. So, we've got devil, we've got Satan, we've got Beelzebub, and we've got the meaning of Baal as meaning your husband, and we've also got Satan the accuser. So, who accused in the beginning? Oh, wait! 
It was the first Adam, your husband, Beelzebub. You get it? Satan? So Adam, Baal, Beelzebul, Satan are all rolled into one in this same name. Jesus, Adam, Satan, to, pretending to be so enlightened, and they do, they treat us like we're so dumb, we don't know nothing. They're the enlightened ones. But could not speak the truth, but claimed himself to be God and one with the Father. Jesus does this, man does this as well. That supposedly gave life, claiming to have unsealed the meaning of the book. And he does. He claims he came in the fullness of the book, yet he didn't break down the Old Testament at all and tell you anything. If it is handed to someone to read, he will say, watch this, Isaiah 29, 11, and the entire vision will be to you like the word sealed in a scroll. It is handed to someone, oh, not to someone, to Jesus, the idle man himself trying to break it down. He will say, I cannot read it. You don't know how many times I ask men the meaning of different things off of the pulpit when they come down. And they'd say, well, it's really not for us to know. You know, in time, we will know it. Or when we get there, we will know it. Oh, wow. What what a really great answer, isn't it? So they will say, I cannot because it is sealed. Um, or if the scroll is handed to one unable to read, he will say, I cannot read it. Therefore, the Lord said, these people draw near to me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is but rules taught by men. And isn't it those men on the pulpit teaching self as God and telling you women that they are your head? And the only time they will bring a woman into it is usually to do with headship doctrine. And that's the reason why they don't want you using wisdom to test the spirit of the Antichrist, which is exactly what these men represents, what the first Adam represented. He was the Antichrist. And he is the one saying that he is the lawgiver. He is the one that will give the law and he will subjugate you under that law because he is the Antichrist. He goes against the anointed one and her law. She was sent to give man the law in the beginning. We established it in the Old Testament. Now, <clears throat> what else does it say? No, see, it didn't save it. Yeah, it did. So now, we get this verse in Revelations 2.20, and it's very important because it tells us a key detail. And I'm not so sure that it probably doesn't tell us this in other passages, but we're going to use Revelations 2.20. And she seized, yes, she did. She seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan. So what did the woman say? The serpent did give to me and I did eat. So who did it just tell you the serpent and the devil and Satan and the dragon is that handed her the fruit? It was Adam. It was the first man that did it. It was him. And then he accused that woman, that woman that thou gavest to be with me. He had to be with you, not to dominate. She was to, the law was to come from her tongue, not yours. But Adam had so much built up pride, he could not do it. Now watch what it says here. Revelations 2.20, and she sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, the first Adam, the accuser, and bound him for a thousand years. So what's the word bind here mean? To bind here is the strong Greek 12.10. Usage, I bind, I tie, I fasten, watch, compel. I declare to be prohibited and unlawful what the first man declared as the truth and has been declaring under the guise of a righteous son, Satan, Adam, um, the second Adam, Jesus. Even as I am head of the church, so too is man head of his wife. So what is he saying? He's saying he's the lawgiver. Man is the lawgiver. No, he's not. This angel that holds fast the first Adam and the lawyer and all the lies that are still in this earth that have never been tested by the true warriors in the spirit, us who are the first fruits, not those out there pretending, we have a real spiritual battle going on. You know, we need to cling tightly to Jesus. Ah, no battle. All dissolved for you girls and boys. Don't got to use your brain. No battle there, is there? None at all. Yeah, too weak, too fearful, too unbelieving.
to even stand up and try where that antichrist spirit truly came from in the beginning. So all comes back to the law that will bind him, which is the truth of God. God says to the harlot spirit, thy wisdom, it has perverted thee. That's where I was going on the last video. So she is telling her, you think like a man, not like me, wisdom, your mother. So the millennial reign, as they call it, so we got to question what the millennial reign is, in which she binds him with the truth. That's what it speaks of binding him for a thousand years. Um, for that thousand years, um, the Lord will truly reign. And it is the Lord that was denied in the beginning and her law. So she binds him. I declare to be prohibited and unlawful what you men have been declaring. And you have been declaring it as the Antichrist. But because you are no warriors in the spirits, but liars and proud and boastful, you can't be bothered to study the truth. But we do get the validation here that what Eve was professing was actually saying, that snake, that snake. Look, he, she went silent. And, and we've understood why she, she just got so hurt. She went into a deep mourning and then deep anger, right? So she turns. And when the spirit of truth turned from us, we fell asleep into the lie when man struck her heel with the poison. And yet she's going to crush that snake's head, that lion snake's head. She's going to crush it. And it is the woman's seed that will do it. No man can do this. And uh, so we know it's only women who can speak on the truth. We know this. I'm not going to go over it. For those who's watched many of my videos, you already understand how they buried over the female, but did leave enough for us to grab onto. That's the grace of the Spirit doing that for us. Um, drawing her true daughters, her true warriors in the Spirit back to herself. Um, so if you're here seeking truth, it's because you've got a warrior spirit in you. That's what you got. There's something in there rising up going, there's something wrong here. And you're pulling against it. You're pulling against it. And that takes strength to do that. It really does. Don't ever feel small, sisters and brothers out there, who, that this, is, this system may do the same for you, make you feel small. Don't ever feel small when you're struggling for that truth. That truth is important. And the Spirit recognizes that in you, that you are one of the warriors that's going to bring about this reign of peace, right? So there we go. Um, I know it's a poorly made video. Uh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to say that. Um, I just never seem to have the words that I want. And um, sorry. I I'd like to go back to being young. <laughs> Anyway, um, thanks so much for watching my video. I hope I said everything I intended to say. Um, but to the nice lady who asked the question, you know, about time frames, I really, I, you know, I really can't get caught up in the time frames uh, so much as the theology, theology and the spirit behind that. That's where what my gift is. Maybe yours would be um, establishing time frames. Uh, maybe some of the sisters here, those are your gifts, you know, to establish the various time frames. Um, and how, you know, over time, this truly is, it's an encapsulation of our entire history on planet Earth. And all we got to do is look around with our eyes to see that that is the truth. It is the truth. It's playing out now. I mean, it's the constant truth, <laughs> which is the constant lie. <laughs> Um, and it's it's the warrior spirit that's going to try the spirits and find out that it is the Antichrist spirit behind the face of religion going, oh, but we're such good men. But shut up, woman. <laughs> um, anyway, um, again, sorry. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you all have a lovely day. And um, I hope you're blessed with an abundance of truth. And thanks again.